Okay, well, um, sorry for the change of time. I don't know if this is a better time for folks, but because of the vision event, I uh, decided to have it uh, before the vision event. And uh, then uh, our next meeting, you know, some of you may have questions regarding the vision event and some of the speakers and, you know, we can talk about that. Sound good? Dr. Condra, I missed the first part of what you said. <laughs> oh, I, my apologies that uh, we're having the meeting at a different time. Oh, okay. Uh, because of the vision event. The vision event starts at noon. Ah. And so I thought better have it uh, now because we have some uh, members of uh, the Conjure Out program are from Europe. Yeah. And if we start late in the afternoon, Eastern time, that'll put it like 10 o'clock and 11 in Europe. So 1030 is a good time for us in the US. Except, <laughs> if, except if you're in California, it may be a little early, but 730 isn't too bad. Got it. So anyway, welcome everyone. And let me open things up for questions. You can raise your hand or. I think there was a problem with uh, the meeting with Chris. For some reason, she wasn't able to log on. So we, we got that corrected. The internet and the Zoom meetings are great when they work. Oh. When they don't work, everybody's upset. So how's everybody doing? We're good. Good. I'm hoping 2024 will be a good year for everybody. Praying that. We're praying that, Dr. Condrat. And I'm praying for all of you, too. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I I heard from Chris, because I emailed her back and forth, and um, you took a, a look at my records, and you said my, my eyes were fine. And I'll tell you, Dr. Condrat, it's amazing what has taken place with me since I've been doing the microcurrent. I get in my car. I don't wear my glasses very much and I can get in my car not without my glasses and I'm driving down the road. So it's a good thing I have an extra pair in my glove compartment. And I'll tell you what really made me realize my eyes were getting better. I was not able to thread my sewing machine and even with the threader. And then one day I went to do it it was amazing. I saw it so clearly and I went right through the needle. So praise the Lord. Thank you. Wonderful. Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You're right. Yeah. Well, you made my day. I love it when patients do have a good improvement, even though their eye doctor may tell them nothing can be done. Live with it. You're going to go blind. One, one, more, one more quick thing. I soak my, um, my washcloths in uh, a solution of two drops of the frankincense. What is, how, how long should I do it? It's usually five or 10 minutes. Is that enough? Oh yeah. In fact, it's probably absorbed almost instantly. Oh, you just okay. Drop the gloves in, but the frankincense is wonderful. It's an amazing uh, healing oil that, uh, I don't know if you ever listened to Dr. Vega's talk. I yes. mean, there's so much research that's done with frankincense in terms of its healing power even in terms of altering our DNA and, you know, genetic structure. I'm wondering if I should start doing the ear program because I did make a, I, I uh, sewed something that would be easy around my ears. So I'm going to try to do that. It's, I'm not having terrible ear uh, hearing problems, but I think I could have an improvement. Yeah. Well, you might want to try the pads. Oh, one pad on each ear. Because it's kind of cumbersome with the washcloths. You need a oh, strap that's or a good something. One. So I'll order those. Well, thank yeah, the you. Pads, the pads are nice. and just stick one in one ear and in the other ear. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you. Good. And thanks for a, a good positive report. Hi, Sue. Hi, good morning. 
Uh, my question is regarding the EDTA uh, chelation suppositories. Um, I've got them. Um, I just don't know what to expect. I haven't tried it yet because I don't know if I'm going to, how do I know if I'm getting kidney damage from the chelation? And secondly, am I going to get diarrhea in the middle of the night? Or how do I know um, if it's working properly? or if it's if I'm having a reaction to it. Okay, well, number one, um, it's unusual to hear about kidney damage from them. In fact, some doctors use, use chelation to <clears throat> treat kidney damage. So okay. when you're getting the IV chelation, it is important that you look at your kidney function because you're getting a large dose quickly. Mm -hmm. And what the doctors will do will look at your creatinine clearance. It's the number that tells you the health of your kidney. So I don't think it's really a concern because the rectal suppository is a, a gentle treatment. Now, in terms of diarrhea, I often get, you know, an episode of explosive diarrhea after I, I insert the suppository. So you have to time it. So if you have your bowel movement early in the morning, you want to wait till you have your bowel movement and then use the suppository. Oh, it's not only at night? No, you can do it anytime during the day. I Oh. I don't I know. It was supposed to be right when you go to bed, so that's why I was worried. No, no, you do you do your eye treatment before you go to bed, but I would Oh. I'd be reluctant to do the suppository before I go to bed because that that's when you may have an accident. Right, right. That was my concern. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So okay. I would do it right after you have a bowel movement. Okay. Before I eat. I don't want to well, eat. I don't think it really matters. Uh, just you, you don't want to have it, you know, when your rectum is full of fecal material. Mm -hmm. So after you have your daily bowel movement, whether it's in the morning, the afternoon or whatever time it is, that's when you might want to try the suppository. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you. Now, some people like the suppository cold. You keep it in the refrigerator. And that may have less irritation. Some people like it warm at room temperature. So you may want to experiment with that. Okay. But keep us posted. Now, initially, you may have some problems because you're body is just not used to the suppository, but after a while, you should get used to it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, well, good luck. Thanks. I have a question, Dr. Condra. And who is that? Is that Ben? Ben, yeah. Um, yeah hi, it's, ben. Really, it's really, hi, it's really for Maria. I was just curious what kind of eye um, affliction she was um, uh, treating just, just from a general standpoint. Glaucoma, uh, glaucoma, the pressure, but my pressure has gone down to 14 the last time I sent you the papers and I saw my doctor and I really am waiting because of the microcurrent. I'm waiting for, um, where would my pressure have to be for the doctor to tell me to stop those latanopost drops? Well, um, that depends. I mean, normal pressure is between 12 and 20. When you have glaucoma, sometimes they want to keep it towards the low end. Well, I'm if you remember when, when you're doing the microcurrent, your eyes um, tolerate higher pressures better because oh. the microcurrent is improving circulation to the nerve and improving the function of the retina. That's probably the reason why your vision is improving. So if should I not do my microcurrent every day? I would definitely do it every day. Oh, good, because I, I feel comfortable. There are times when I'm too busy and I can't, but when you said it, it's okay to do it, you know, every other day for some reason, but I'm fine with doing it every day. And also the syntonic glasses. Yeah, well, it's kind of like walking or exercise. You know, it's a good idea to, to exercise every day, but if you skip a day, it's not like you're going to get out of shape. But if you don't do it for a couple of weeks, then your body's going to get out of shape. So the microcurrent, is gently stimulating your eye. And remember, it's adding electrons. Electrons make the pH negative. People say you want a negative pH. So it's helping the overall health of your eye. But it's okay that my pressure is going down. 
yeah, well, that's, I'm sure your doctor's <laughs> going to be happy because with glaucoma, you want the pressure on the low side. And I don't have a problem with the with putting the drops in, the latanopost drops at night. It's just one in each eye. And it's not a big deal. So I, I'll, I'll do that forever. I'm not well, getting if you don't, it. If you don't need the drops, why put them in? Well, but I don't know whether I do or not. I'm waiting for <laughs> I'm waiting yeah, wait, to the... talk, talk to your eye doctor and, well, uh, you know, see what they have to say. They don't, they tend to be more on the, the medical side that they don't want. Oh, yeah. So then how do I know? I mean, like well, I said, can I, can I tell you something off the record? Sure. Well, what I advise a lot of patients to do, don't take the drops three days before your eye exam. Oh, okay. And you go in and the doctor may examine you and go, hey, Marie, you're doing great. Keep up the eye drops. And you're smiling inside knowing that you didn't take them and you don't need them. Then if you go in and your pressure is up and the doctor goes, oh, my goodness, your pressure is up. You can play a senior moment and say, oh, doctor, I think I forgot my drops today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't hear that from me. I don't want to get in trouble. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Off the record. Marie, how long have you been on the program using microcurrent to get uh, this resolved? It was a year. It'll be two years coming in um, April. So slow and steady wins the race. I think that some people will get an immediate improvement after a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Other people, you know, it takes time. It's like exercise or getting on a weight loss program. You know, you got to stick with it. Well, I've had this improvement for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And my husband fell the other day and uh, broke his kneecap. So I'm the chauffeur and we have to go out with clients to a dinner at night. And I don't normally drive at night, but I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> well, you know what? I think I can do it now that my eyes are getting better. And it's not a, a far, uh, it's not a long distance from the house. So I'm good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. I have a question. <laughs> this is this Bonnie? Is Bonnie. Yeah, um, hi, Bonnie. I, I heard you just say to do the eye microcurrent at night. I've, I haven't been doing it at night, I'm doing it in the morning. Does that matter? No, it, it you know, I, I think to be honest with you, it's probably better <clears throat> to do it at night. Uh, there hasn't been any studies. The reason is that your retina and I tend to regenerate at night. So it makes uh -huh. sense to me. You do it before you go to bed and you sleep and that energy is going into the eye and uh, it's helping, you know, to, rejuvenate and heal ah okay uh, and another question has to do with the pads because i've ordered some two by two by two pads but i noticed that you i could get two by four pads and i thought well would it be more um would you get a better result <laughs> if you had the those say on your abdomen and your back they're bigger do or is it more effective uh, no, I don't think there'll be any difference, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. As long as, um, you know, the current's being delivered to your body. Uh -huh. And uh, the way to tell if the current's being delivered to your body is look at the indicator lights on your microcurrent machine. There's two <laughs> lights in the corner. Uh -huh. And when the circuit is closed, those lights should be off. Yeah. Okay. All right, got that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, somebody uh, sent me a note uh, that they don't have a link for the vision event. So I would email the office right now and we'll send you the link. Email info at healing the eye and tell them you don't have the link for the vision event and I'll send it to you right now. I can't do that now because I'm on this meeting, but send it to info at healing the eye and they'll send you the link. But a link did go out at eight o'clock in the morning today, to everybody that registered. 
So you should have it. Dr. Kondrat? Yes. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. So um, I know we're going to be scheduling a meeting, but since we are in meeting here today, um, so I fell again in December um, and cut open both my knees and then wound up with COVID. And at this point, my vision isn't doing very well. I thought, I, I mean, I started in August with the microcurrent and I thought that there was some improvement, um, but it's not doing so well right now. And I'm wondering if it has to do with these additional environmental factors and incidents that occurred. Um, but, and I've, I've also noticed that like, I, and, and I'm wondering if a lot of what goes on with my vision is related to the um, cervical spine. And, um, you know, maybe when I fell that um, did something and I have these issues with uh, ligaments and, and collagen that I, I don't hold myself together well. So I have mm -hmm. now my ankles with compression sleeves, my knees are all wrapped up, my elbows, my wrists. <laughs> and I I really think that there's some link between collagen, the the um, alignment in my cervical and the vision, because when I get injured, the vision gets off and I could feel I know they say you can't feel the pressure, but I feel my eyes no. really, um, I feel like, like a, a balloon, like a water balloon, I guess, all around my eye. Well, there's definitely a link uh, between, you know, different parts of your body and the eye. And as a homeopathic doctor, we look at that and we appreciate that. So. Certainly after a fall or an injury or a shock or a spinal problem, uh, you know, energetically, it's going to affect your body. And uh, because you're not getting a response, we may have to look at changing your microcurrent frequencies, maybe treating a different area of your body, maybe changing the homeopathic remedy. So these are things we have to look at. So when I spoke with Chris last, um, because... I wanted, we were going to wait until after I got uh, an update from the glaucoma specialist. Uh huh. That, that way we had objective information. Um, yeah, because I can't, I can't physically examine you out during a Zoom call. So I like to have those records. Right. And so I saw him last in August when I started the program. And I will be seeing him in March. So we haven't scheduled the meeting yet because I was waiting to see him. I just have this <laughs> fear that if the pressure is up, he's gonna try to push me to do drops again, which I I, I didn't do well the last time. The one, the, the, the two that he gave me, I never, I didn't do well. Well, we can so, assume that he's gonna pressure you to do <laughs> the drops. We can assume that that's his job. But I really feel that, I think that if we just kind of figured out of uh, well I think I have I, to I wait to... until I have to wait till I get your records okay. and we have a meeting and we can go over all that. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. I just but in the meantime just continue doing the treatment and probably one treatment you want to do is number five inflammation. Uh because there could be an inflammatory state in your whole body. And what I would recommend is Maybe you put one washcloth on your forehead, the other one on your toes. You just run it through your whole body. <laughs> oh, I've been doing it on my knees. Um, I do it through your whole body because you have a collagen body. problem and, you know, that issue, the whole body. Okay. That'll, yeah. take care, that'll take care of your cervical area and everything else. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Okay. Conda, just put... Just quickly, would that be a good way to do the inflammation for anyone? Well, 
if you have inflammation of your whole body, it's better to do it focally where it's needed. Oh. So if I fall, fall and hurt my knee, I'm going to put it right on my knee. Yep. But Jennifer is her issues are throughout her whole body. Oh, I got it. Structure okay. and things like that. So very good. Uh, I somebody is there. I don't see your name, but your hands up with the cap. It's it's Vivian. Hi, Vivian. You got to put your name on your your Zoom. You're yeah, okay. Mystery. I'll try. You're a mystery woman. Yes. Well, I like being mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to do that. Um, I have a question. I um, was diagnosed, well, I had a biopsy of my thyroid this week because I have a large nodule, a one inch square nodule on my right lobe. Mm -hmm. And I muscle tested and my I'm sure you're familiar with muscle testing. <laughs> uh -huh. I I got a result that it was benign. And sure enough, when I got my results yesterday, it is benign. But I am wondering if uh, using the microcurrent program on it might help it go away or heal my thyroid. Would, would you recommend I... I use a program on it or use on my whole body or? Well, I can't really give you any advice. I'm not an expert when it comes to the thyroid, but I'm happy that it's not a malignant tumor. The oh, thing we have to so know is I. what, what uh, is causing that. Is it, it inflammation? Certainly if it's an inflammatory <laughs> process, then the inflammation program would help. So I, well, really I, can't asked... give you any, I really can't give you any <laughs> advice on that. <laughs> Okay. I asked the women who were helping with the biopsy the cause, and they said they don't know. Mm -hmm. And everybody has thyroid nodules, which came as a surprise to me. I have two. One's as big as a pinhead, but the other one that was suspect it was an inch, almost an inch <laughs> square. And um, I... My own feeling was I felt well, I didn't feel ill, I didn't feel like there was anything wrong, because I do a lot of self-care, you know, microcurrent every day, <laughs> but um, it, it, makes, um, it makes it a little difficult to swallow because it bumps up into my swallowing space <laughs> if I'm uh under stress only if i'm under stress if i'm relaxed it, it's no problem well that tells me you should probably do the stress program oh mm -hmm. there you go <laughs> that's actually one of um, my favorite programs because you know the cause of most disease is stress and your body's in cortisol. a sympathetic state yeah so where so do you, you put the start... gloves for that uh, well, you can just simply hold the gloves in your hand. That's one way of doing it. Or put one on your abdomen and one on your back. Sometimes when I'm under a lot of stress, what I do is I'll tuck one glove in my underpants in the front and in the back. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking around you know, <laughs> Treating doing a stress go. program. Now, I'm not doing it right now because I'm relaxed, but if I keep on getting tough questions, I may have to get my micro. <laughs> plug it in. If we see you leave for your micro current, we'll, we'll know what we've done. <laughs> You're a friendly group, so right now I'm I'm relaxed. I, I have a comment. I've had... Yeah, I've Bonnie. Said, yeah. Um what I stress is an issue for me, of course, and most of us. Um and I have, I've been doing the eyes and then the brain, one mm -hmm. first one, then the other, because they're, it's easy to make that adjustment. Mm -hmm. I've taken that hour that it takes, and I have started to meditate, even though I'm lying down, meditate during that hour. And it lends itself to meditation. And that is very calming. I feel the good effects of it. Yeah, I agree. Deep Great. breathing, positive affirmations, prayer, you know, all these things. Uh, 
are a good uh, supplement to do while you're doing the microcurrent. Yeah. Okay. I have some questions. Let's see. That's uh, Lois. Yes. Hello, doctor. Hi, um, how are you? Uh, well, actually, I unfortunately, I've had an upper respiratory infection, infection for like two weeks now, and I'm really miserable. I keep going back and forth and you know, my primary care doctor suggested steroids and I said, no way, um, because <laughs> I, I, I know, well, first of all, they don't really work and um, they make my, you know, I feel that, you know, the steroids have too many bad side effects for my eyes. But um, anyway, I had a couple questions related to one of the, uh, one of the ladies was talking about um, COVID. And um, I remember I had COVID in October of 2021 and it was in January of 2022 in that and that span of like two two and a half months that my vision started to decline and it was on a bad bad spiral um I'm sorry it was tw October 2022 and then um in January of 2023 and um and I remember when I was going through all that I was doing a lot of noodling around on the internet and I found you know, a lot of people that had had absolutely no indication of macro degeneration before they had COVID that within a short period of time, they developed macular degeneration. Yeah. And um, several of the people in um, Europe, in the Scandinavian countries, and I believe in Germany, um, they immediately, you know, um, uh, they, they underwent microcurrent treatment and it resolved their macular degeneration and that's what kind of convinced me you know to um to find you <laughs> and, and go with your program and um so i'm just wondering in your experience have you know have have you heard of that or noticed that you know is is that true that you know covid in people that um you know supposedly it had no macular degeneration beforehand you know, suddenly within a few months of having um, COVID, they, they started to develop macular degeneration. Um, yeah. And so that, that was one of my questions. Yeah, well, it's definitely been reported in the ophthalmology literature. Right, that's, that's what I thought. Not okay. so much the macular degeneration, but inflammation of the retina. Okay, yes. Which might okay. be misdiagnosed as macular degeneration. Yeah, okay, so, okay, but, good, you know, good. Microcurrent uh, certainly uh, the the, uh, the any any type of inflammation responds very well to microcurrent. Yeah, I have my on my right, right now. <laughs> um, yeah. And then and then um, my other question was: It seems that you know since I've been sick now, um, I've I have not left the house in two weeks. But you oh. know, I'm noticing as I'm reading or well, actually, I drove once. Um, I had to I had to drive to the post office to mail my grandchildren Valentine's, but I noticed when I was driving, my vision was way more blurry. And you know, can that be attributed somewhat to having you know the bad upper respiratory infection? And yeah, you know, definitely, because your body, you know, your whole system is under stress. Okay. Okay. And it's so probably affecting your eyes. Okay. So over time, as I improve that you know, that should go away. Okay. Cause, cause I was getting a little bit anxious and I'm like, you know, should I make, you know, I'm not supposed to see my um, retina specialist until March. And I'm like, well, um, gosh, you know, should I, um, you know, should I make an appointment or whatever, but, but that's good to know now. And I will say when I was there at the end of January, my eyes, um, since I've been on the program, I started in September and then I was there with my retina doctor in October and December and then again, the end of January, and I've stayed stable. Uh, whereas the previous eight months, all I did was decline. So kudos to you, Dr. <laughs> oh, well, thank well, you. Well, but one, one suggestion, you may want to do the inflammation program on your lungs. Okay, where would you, would I put that in the front, or the back, or on either side? Uh, one in the front, one in the front, one in the back, or you can put one on the left side, one on the right side. You know, so the okay. current travels through the lungs. Okay, good. All right. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Or if, okay. uh, if one lobe, if you have particular sensation on one side, you know, put the gloves on that side. Okay. That All right. Help. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. And then I have, yeah. I have, I have one other, one other quick question. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, I've been having issues with long COVID since I had COVID the second time in October 22. And um, one of the things, you know, I've read a lot about what is it, your vagal nerve might need a reset. Um, can we use, um, you know, the program, I think the protocol, I think it's number three, the parasympathetic. Can we use that, like put it on our ear and then, you know, put a pad on our ear and then on our lower neck or use the gloves as long as they're not touching to hopefully stimulate the vagal nerve? Oh, yeah, to reset? you could give it a try. Okay. All right. Thank you. And also for the long COVID, there are some good homeopathic remedies for the long COVID. Oh, really? Possible. So you okay. may want to uh, schedule a time where we can talk about that. I can review your symptoms. Okay, good, good. Well, actually, well, I do. I have to get all my information from Cleveland Clinic sent to you. And my most recent, you know, um, I, you know, my most recent OCT scans. But, you know, I've just been so sick and the brain fog has been so bad that you know, trying to sit down and compose a long email with yeah. everything just hasn't hasn't been of something I've been able to accomplish. But we need to do that anyway, because, um, you know, I had had my homeopathic and started having trouble with it. So you sent me pellets and I did that and there's there still was no improvement. So, yeah, OK, so we thank gotta, you. We got to look at that. OK, okay. thank you so much. Uh, I'm Elaine. Curious. I'm, Elaine. Curious as, I'm curious as to whether Lois took the vaccination shot. Absolutely not. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. <laughs> uh, Elaine, hi. You're, you're yeah. muted. You have to unmute yourself. Are you okay? Good. Uh, oh, you're can good. You, can you hear me? Yes. Yep, I hear you. I just wanted to relate to what uh, was said about having COVID. I had 20, 30 all of my life vision, and it was very clear for me. to see. I never needed glasses for reading or anything. And the fourth day of COVID that was really bad, my vision got very bad. And I figured it would go away after COVID, but it didn't. So I went in for oh, an wow. exam. And that's when it all started with wet macular. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Yeah, there's definitely a relationship. Definitely. Well, I, the, okay. I have had all of the COVID vaccinations and I've never had COVID. But uh, so I'm a believer in the vaccinations. Um, I don't know what I, it's sounding as if none of you believe in that, but I do. So um, I, I'm just curious um, I, um, why you would not have the vaccination if you, if these problems happen with people. Well, I'd like to avoid I like to avoid this topic because it's very polarizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's the people that love the vaccine and the people that are totally against it. I'm in the camp that feels that the vaccine has no value at all, yep. except making big pharma a lot of money. And if you really yep. look at the studies, okay. it's yep. horrible. Mm -hmm. It's horrible what it's doing to our uh, system. This is right. not an approved vaccine. It's an mRNA, which nobody knows long-term effects. And if you start looking at the medical literature right now, it's horrible what's happening. More people have died from the vaccine than have died from COVID. I'm convinced of that. That's yes. correct. Yep, wow. I agree. Yep, yep. Yeah, I was I was blessed early on. My immuno, my my asthma immunology doctor told me in no uncertain terms to um, absolutely not get the vaccine, and she told all her patients that as well. Mm -hmm. So. Now they're penalizing p uh, people that are saying that that are in the medical field. Mm -hmm. They have been for years. Does she still have her license? <laughs> yes, she. Yes, she does. She's amazing. I'm. I'm very blessed. Yeah. Yeah. She oh, told me. Yeah. She said. I'll, she said I'll probably get in trouble with the medical board, but so far she has not. So. <laughs> the um, Surgeon General of the State of Florida just came yes. out with shocking study yes he's a brilliant um individual a medical doctor and he he's forbidding anybody getting the vaccine in the state of florida he he's not with the federal government states mm -hmm. yes wow wow why did we not hear any of this 
Well, anybody that I... spoke out against it lost their medical license yep. or they were ridiculed. Now studies yep. are coming out that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine are very effective in yep. treating. Yep, it. my Even... doctor prescribed those for me when I had it. Yeah. <laughs> Homeopathic yeah. pulled me through COVID three times. Oh, wow. And now, and now they're saying, you know, when it, they it, for, they first start talking about ivermectin, they were calling it horse medicine. You can't take it. It'll kill mm -hmm. you. It's only for horses. And it's probably one drug that's been used for maybe 50 or 60 years. It's uh, very effective for treating parasites and a lot of infections. It's safe. <laughs> Speaking of parasites, does everybody have them? And should we take ivermectin? I've gotten so many uh, emails with uh, recommendations <laughs> for treating parasites, which most people are supposedly have. No, Do everybody, you think that everybody has parasites. Everybody has bacteria in their gut. Uh, the parasites and bacteria will get out of control if your uh, immune system is weak or if, you're, if the energy of your body's weak. So if you're not having any symptoms, there's no reason to treat it. Okay, no, no symptoms. I feel great. In fact, there's now another... they're saying that, uh, you know, your gut, a healthy gut will give you a healthy vision and a healthy brain. Yes. Unfortunately, our guts are becoming sterile because we're taking antibiotics. We're eating genetically modified food. We're eating toxins and poisons with all the preservatives and pesticides. I, need also healthy... got... I can remember when I was younger, I would, you know, eat a dirty apple, drink out of the garden hose. Mm -hmm. uh, now... <laughs> Kids are walking around with hand sanitizers and they're sanitizing their oh, hands. And, oh. You know, you have to be exposed to dirt. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> and I, uh, one of the healthiest, one of the healthiest cultures are the French. Because anytime you greet somebody, you kiss them on both sides. You're exposed to their bacteria. Wow. So we're meant we're meant to hug each other. And mm -hmm. we're, we need exposure to different uh, organisms and, and bacteria. <laughs> well, oh, I, uh, I Trago, I... how are you? Oh. Trago, you have to unmute yourself. A uh, couple of things. Um, I've been getting up in the morning to go out and watch the sunrise. Uh, could that make my macular degeneration worse? No, it should help it. Okay. It, it's when I come in, I'm I'm not seeing real well, uh, because it's so bright. And then I come into the inside. The second well, thing, you is, know, Doctor Doctor Bates talked about the you know sunning, but you do it with your closed eyes. You don't do it with open eyes. So don't look at the morning sun. Even sun sunset, the sunrise, you still don't want to look at it, huh? But you want to close your eyes and just okay. turn your head back and forth so the image of the sun. Okay. We'll go across yeah, I, the but you don't want to look at it directly. It may be too bright. Okay. Second, we started a new a homeopathic remedy two or three months ago. Um, my I did an eye exam this past week. Uh, my macular de degeneration is back where it was a year ago. Um, a little bit larger bubble. Um, so I I don't know I I've, I've I'm feeling better physically my appetite came back, uh, you know I've been I've been doing the um, EDTA chelation for almost eight months now, and I, I, my last lead level was was back toward normal. Oh good. Uh, I I found I found some nickel that was actually almost a little bit in the uh, abnormal level. Uh, I've now finished my removal of my mercury in my teeth this last week was my last my last exam so i'm, I'm i don't know what the next step is as far as uh, working on the on my eye um you know i've been doing the um you know i changed the micro currency to do at mm -hmm. night which is really night it's just a nice transition into going to bed so mm -hmm. that's that's been working out probably two or three months now. I've been doing that. Um, 
uh, I think that's all. I think I just, uh, send me send me a copy of the, your most recent records. Okay. Uh, and then we'll take you, a look at that to see if we have to make any changes. But remember, slow, slow and steady wins the race. We want you to be moving in the right direction. Right. Uh, and and this last one wasn't in the right direction, according to the ophthalmologist. Um, yeah, you told me that, uh, you know, to check back with you two or three months for maybe a possibly a new homeo, homeopathic remedy. A remedy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I am feeling better, but I, my eyes are not doing better yet. Well, usually with homeopathy, we like a change in the mental emotional state first. I'm... So that's kind of perplexing to me that you're feeling better, but the vision's worse. So we're yeah. going to have to kind of sort through things and find out what's going on. So we want to continue with the same homeopathic met remedy. Right yeah, until now. until uh, until we talk. Okay. okay. Sound good? Yes. Dr. Condrat, just quickly with the EDTA, if we do it in the daytime, because I've been doing it at nighttime and I haven't had any you know, issues, but if I do it in the daytime, how long does it have to do? You have to lay down for a certain amount of time? No. Oh. Once you insert the suppository, you can walk around. It shouldn't be an issue. I oh. do it during the day, always. Oh, well, that's great. That's so much better. Yeah. Thank you. Where do Get those suppositories. Um, you can order them through Chris, or I think you can get them online. I'm not sure. It may, it may require a medical license to get them now. It's called Detoximin? Yeah, Detoximin. And um, the instructions that came said to take at night. The instructions say right prior to bed and don't eat for three hours prior to doing it. I don't think that's necessary. So that's why I was concerned about getting diarrhea while I'm in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better to get the diarrhea during the day when you're near a toilet than it in bed. Exactly. <laughs> right. And also, um, the, the detoximin said that, well, the email from Chris indicated that it, it determines the micrograms of... Uh, detoximin depends upon your weight and right. she indicated that in the email that 159 and below was a certain milligrams and then above that and then going up is more milligrams and on the detoximin website it said that 150 pounds or less was 500 milligrams per dose and then from 150 pounds to 175 pounds was 750 milligrams per dose, and then going up as the weight increased. But I spoke with a representative at Detoximin, and he, he recommended, I weigh 146, but he recommended I take the 750 milligram dose because my lead levels were so high. So I don't know if you have any comments about that. And also well, usually, the I like, usually I like to start out with the lower dose. That's gentle. Okay. You want to do gentle chelation. So he's a salesman. He wants you to take a higher dose to make more money. Of course. Of course. And also I believe, pricing, I believe in starting out gently. The pricing that Chris quoted and the price on the Detoxman website were not the same either. So I didn't know how to purchase them through Healing the Eye because there was no reference and it's not on the website. Oh, you have to talk to Chris. But if you can order them online, you know, order them online. No, Dr. Conrad, I think ordering them from your office is less expensive than ordering them from Detoximin. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. they are. We're, we're going to have to increase the price. <laughs> <laughs> You you I'm try to keep you, you try to take good care of us. You always try to keep the prices down, and we no, we always try to keep, have the lowest price. Yes, thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Vivian. Do you have another question? Or are you stretching? No, I I'm doing my stress program now that you recommended it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a pompa uh, put on 
the internet uh, an experience he had using cilantro and chlorella to try to detox from heavy metals. And what he talked about was that it it actually pulled out the toxins but didn't get rid of them. That it just pulled everything out of his tissues, but then evidently he had a bad experience and it did not cleanse. And I wondered, you know, because I'm always trying to do do the things that will help my body. But is there a risk if you try to detox with those things that it might just bring them out of the tissues where they're nestled into your circulation, cause more of a problem? Uh, well, the cilantro will, will bind those heavy metals and it should make it water soluble and it should be excreted. I don't understand. He may have taken too much cilantro, or maybe he has an exceptionally high level of toxic metals in his body. But I have not heard that. Cilantro <laughs> is actually a very gentle way of detoxifying. And unless you have be... unless you have kidney stones, you don't want to take cilantro. <laughs> yeah. It's it's way too high in oxalate, but anyway. <laughs> so um when you successfully would be detoxing with, say, cilantro, do you have the healing crisis where you feel worse before you feel better? Well, you should not. If you're gently te uh, uh, detoxing, you should not have any healing crisis. Mm -hmm. If you do, you're being too aggressive. We, you know, you want gentle detoxification. And of course, at the same so time, you need to drink plenty of water, lots of water. If you do any type of chelation and you're dehydrated, you're going to have a, a, a toxic reaction. You got to drink a lot of water. Okay, thank you. Is there a certain amount of cilantro that you think is good? Or, I mean, just eating it on Mexican food going to help? Or do you need to make, <laughs> have more of it or? Well, I think, uh, you know, cilantro is, is a food. It's like yeah. eating too much lettuce or too much of anything. Uh, but I like a lot of cilantro on my Vietnamese sandwich. I put cilantro in my soup. Uh, it's like saying, you know, can you eat too much basil? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so I think you just, I think you just have to listen to your body. Okay. And is it as effective if, if you say you have it in a tea or if it's not raw, is it just as effective not raw? Well, that I don't know. Is I it think best you're better raw? off. I think you're better off eating it raw because the hot water will probably uh, alter some of the chemicals responsible for the chelation. But remember, the best way to remove the heavy metals is the EDTA. The cilantro is effective but it's not as effective as the EDTA. The EDTA is kind of like the gold standard for removing heavy metals. Dr. Conrad, what about the uh, tablets? Dr. Brownstein recommends two of those every day. Are you talking about cilantro tablets or the- No, no, the EDTA. Oh yeah, the oral EDTA is, <laughs> is, is great. And also at the same time, the uh, detoximin. Yeah, okay. that's kind of my, my program. I do the rectal a couple times a week. Um, and then I do the oral every day. I use the oral with the uh, garlic. Really? How do you take it? Well, there's a, a, a product. I can't think of the name. Chris knows it's a combination of EDTA and garlic extract. I mean, garlic is known for helping detoxify the body, improving the cardiovascular system. Oh, so, so I, I can, like he can tell me if I email Let's him. See. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's right over here. Let me get it. I'm not going to the bathroom. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just did the stress program and it really, I feel great. I can tell a difference. Okay. You look it's great called, too. <laughs> enhanced, I can't, I can't see it. 
enhanced garlic EDTA. Say it again. It has a thousand, a thousand milligrams of EDTA and it has garlic extract, 200 milligrams of garlic extract. I like and it. What's, what's the name of it? Enhanced garlic EDTA. Oh, okay. Very good. And it, I know Chris is, this is one of the products Chris recommends and you can buy it online. Okay. And Thanks. I love it. And it doesn't give you bad breath because that's um, a deodorized garlic. That's okay. very important. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Thank right. you. Enhanced uh, oh, anyway, um, we're going to have to end now because I have to prepare for the vision event. Okay, well, bless you, right. Dr. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, good meeting. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for attending. Oh. And remember, in two weeks, it'll also be at 1030. Okay. 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 Thank you, doctor. Okay. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. 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 Thank